Simply put, sense. What's going on, guys? <sighs> Nobody's in here yet, but I'm gonna do it. You know how I do. Um, <laughs> guys, I wanted to talk to you about some really cool stuff today. Um, well, I wanted to share with you, like, a couple of fragrances that you probably already know about, I'm sure. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about them because I never talked about them, so... Yeah, I want to talk about them. What's going on? How you doing, bro? I appreciate you for coming through. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, guys. <laughs> <laughs> or guy rich <laughs> since you're the only way here right now um i hope you're great man thanks so much for coming through um so every wednesday at burnt Oak goodman i'm going to be coming to you live um sharing with you some interesting finds that i've found <laughs> i'm good how are you i'm very well very very well it's been um a very calm relaxed day today so i've been pretty cool um Usually it can be really, really hectic. So I'm glad it wasn't. <laughs> I'm really, really glad it wasn't. But um, but yeah, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really like in an amazing mood. Like, I mean, it's beautiful outside. It's amazing. Glad to have you back, my guy. You were truly missed. Thank you so much, David. I really appreciate you, brother. Um, you were missed also, my man. You have no idea. Um, I, I really... Uh, I really miss chatting with you all, but I feel like this is even better because I get to actually respond in real time to whatever comments you all have. And I feel like this is a really cool thing. Although I really kind of miss doing my edited videos and I will start to work on those, but they're really hard to do because of my lack of time at the moment. But at least I can keep in touch with my community by doing live streams here at Bergdorf Goodman. Which by the way, guys, I always say, if you're in New York, please come through. Come at Ber come to Bergdorf Goodman and say hello. I'm in the basement. I'm usually here Wednesdays through Sundays. And it would be an honor to give you all a tour of the fragrance floor. Um, I know some of the best hidden gems in Bergdorf Goodman, and there are so many. And um, I would love to show you those hidden gems and give you guys a tour. Um, it's a fun, amazing store. And I have to tell you again, as I said many times, the women's store just makes the men's store embarrassing. Like, you'll go to the men's store, nothing. Like, no. It's it's not, it's not nothing compared to the women's store when it comes to Bergdorf Goodman and fragrance. So the women's store is where you want to go if you're looking for perfume. A lot of guys will make the mistake of going to the men's store, and the options there just don't cut it. I mean, there's some great fragrances there, but when you come to the women's store, there is so many more. Um, so many more brands. Um, so many more fragrances within the brands that are in the men's store. I mean, it makes no sense how they treat men. I tell you, we are always a second, second thought. You know, the last, last thought is always the guys. You know, it's unfortunate how that goes. But um, yeah, if you're ever in New York, definitely come to Bergdorf Goodman in the women's side of the street. And I will show you an amazing experience at the store. Um, but it's spring. It's the first, like, it's already spring. Spring passed. Um, days are short. Days are much, much, much longer, which I'm happy about. I get to leave the store and see sunlight, which is like, yay. Um, so awesome stuff. But since the spring is here, I wanted to share with you all some options that I think are amazing spring fragrances. And I've been doing that for the last couple of weeks, sharing with you some fragrances that I think are amazing. Check out my light. It's really interesting. I don't think you guys are going to see that, but anyway, um, I've been uh, trying to, it's too bright in here for me to use these, but I'm still fascinated by these lights. Anyway, um, so I've been sharing with you some really, really cool fragrances for the spring over the last couple of streams, but it continues. Uh, today I have a couple of more fragrances to share with you all. Fragrances that you've already known about and at the end of this live stream, I have a new release by an amazing brand that I wanted to share with you all. No one is talking about it. It's not even sh it's not even available on Fragrantica's website and it's from an amazing, amazing, luxurious niche house. 
So, I think you're only going to be interested in checking out what that fragrance is. So, definitely stay through, stay to the end of this live stream, and you will find out what that scent is. And I'm wearing it. <laughs> it is really beautiful. Uh, it's, it's, it's very niche, very well done, um, and I'm very impressed, and I cannot wait to talk about it. But, guys, I want to share with you um, a find that I had. So, previously, I used to always talk about how fragrances need to last on my skin at least four hours for me to consider the fragrance, right? Um, that's kind of like the standard that I always say, you know, but I have to be honest with you guys. There are some fragrances that I absolutely love that do not get to the four hour mark and I love them. I can't help it. They just smell amazing. I'm attracted to them. They're beautiful to me and and um, I wear them all the time, but I have to respray or I have to use them for the moments that I need them for, hopefully within three to four hours. Um, and so, yeah, a couple of fragrances that I wanted to share with you are, I was looking through my collection and I was like, wow, I haven't worn this in a long time. I haven't worn this since last year, you know, since last summer, spring, you know. So when I saw this bottle, I'm like... I gotta talk about this fragrance because even though it doesn't last on me at all, ah, I love the fragrance. I think the fragrance is one of the most amazing woody experiences that you can find, um, especially under $200. Like, you know, I have to say that, I have to preface that. Um, and the fragrances are, and it's actually a comparative. So I'm gonna share with you two fragrances that a lot of people find smell very similar. And in my opinion, they are future legends. They are fragrances that, in my opinion, will be future legends, um, especially among those who understand fragrance and understand perfume. And the first fragrance I wanted to share with you all, and these fragrances are consistently compared, like people literally think they're dupes of each other. The first fragrance is called Hanoki by Comme de Garçon. Hanoki by Comme de Garçon. I love this fragrance, love, love this fragrance. And the second fragrance is by the brand Aesop, and the fragrance is called Quill. Let me get that in that camera. It's called Quill, Quill and Hanoki. Hanoki and Quill, okay? Two fragrances by amazing brands that are absolutely awesome, and they smell very very similar and I want to share with you which I feel is the best of the two which version of this style of scent I think is the best and um, which one I enjoy the most which I have to tell you I I'm gonna just I'm just gonna tell you now I kind of love them both equally for different reasons so we'll get into that um, but the first fragrance we're gonna talk about is called Hinoki and Hinoki is by Comme de Garçon and it was released in 2008 and this fragrance, in my opinion, is a legend fragrance right now. <laughs> this fragrance has a cult following among people who love it and know about it. Hanoki is considered one of the best cypress perfumes ever made. Um, it's considered one of the top woody fragrances. And I would say among people who just really love woods and incense and green fragrances, this fragrance is considered a standard. A fragrance that you must try if you're a fan of green perfumes that are woody. Um, so Hanoki is basically made from a series called the Monocle series. There are four, I believe, fragrances at this point. One is called Laurel, the other is Sugi or Suji, and I forgot the other third, the fourth one. Uh, all four fragrances, I have to tell you, are very unique, very green leaning scents, and very, very interesting. One of the as I always share with you all, I love Comme de Garçon because Comme de Garçon is one of the only brands in the designer world of perfume that makes fragrances that are worth anyone's time if they're into fragrances that are interesting. You don't go to Comme de Garçon to smell nice. You don't go to Comme de Garçon to smell good, even. <laughs> you go to Comme de Garçon to smell interesting. You know, you choose Comme de Garçon because you want to smell um unique you don't want to be a person that kind of like i guess you could say like um fits in you know you don't hear come to garcon to fit in you're not going to smell like um every other nice fragrance made by other brands uh come to garcon makes fragrances that smell memorable not nice 
and that's how I prefer the smell, and that's why I love this brand so much, among other reasons, one of which they have a in-house creative director, which a lot of brands do not have, um, that makes all of their fragrances in-house. Usually, fragrances are not done that way. And Comme des Garçons is one of the only brands in fragrance, along with Hermes and Chanel, that actually produces their perfumes in-house, uh, even though they are purchased by a conglomerate. Um, I believe they're owned by Coty. One of those. Uh, they're owned by a brand, uh, but they're allowed to do their own thing and not be run by a conglomerate that just wants to make basic fragrances that people just love at Sephora. Um, that's not what Comme des Garçons is all about, and that's why I love this brand. Um, Comme des Garçons Hanoki is a, is a cult following fragrance. This scent has hundreds and thousands of thousands and thousands of followers all over the world that buy this bottle religiously. Um, certain people just have a, a, certain people just are weak need when it comes to this fragrance and for good reason. I mean, I mean, Hanoki is just amazing. First of all, I'll just describe to you the notes in this fragrance. So Hanoki has ingredients of cypress, turpentine, <laughs> which I love. I love industrial ingredients and, uh, Comme de Garçon likes to throw some weird your stuff in their fragrances. It also has camphor, which is green, um, cedar, thyme, pine, Georgian wood, frankincense, uh, moss, and vetiver. There's a lot of vetiver, a lot of frankincense, and a lot of moss and uh, green ingredients in Hanoki. Um, Hanoki, by the way, is a Japanese cypress tree. That's basically what Hanoki is. Hanoki, um, the Hanoki tree is also used in temples and various religious and cultural um, monuments, buildings in Japan. Um, it's amazingly, amazingly calming and uh, makes people who smell it feel at ease and relaxed. It is meditative, I would say, an amazing experience. If you're into meditation, uh, Hanoki is a fragrance that you probably wouldn't wear when you're meditating because it does definitely take your brain. It makes you think about the scent. And when you're meditating, your brain is supposed to be blank, right? But um, Hanoki is a fragrance that just makes you feel calm and serene. And it's just very, very, very beautiful. Um, one of the things I find about Hanoki is it kind of reminds me of like being in a forest after it rained. You're not, you're climbing the tree. Why do I say that? Okay, imagine you climbed the cypress tree in the middle of the forest after it rained. And then when you got to the top of that, you took a deep breath. And you smelled the air, the cypress leaves, the wood, all of those different things, the, the scent of the rain, all at one time. That's kind of what Hanoki reminds me of. It's very clean, very fresh, very airy, very, very beautiful. And I would say that this scent, in my opinion, comes to the spring, there's very few fragrances that just scream spring like Hanoki does. And um, when you wear it, it's not going to fill the room. It's a very close to the skin fragrance and it doesn't last long, which is why I wanted to talk about it because um, a lot of times we in the fragrance community, we kind of crap on fragrances that don't last and we give all praise to fragrances that are like 24 hour beasts. And I have to tell you, I find that the way I used to think about perfume, especially in the beginning of my journey, was in line with that thought, and now it's completely different. I don't wear fragrances as much for longevity, although I always say, like, I prefer to get to that at least four-hour mark. But I have to say, there are times when I'm doing something that only I'm only doing it for... I'm, there are times when I need a fragrance for a reason that only lasts for two hours or, you know, a need that's only an hour or two long. And in those situations, a fragrance like Hanoki is going to kill, absolutely murder, uh, because it smells amazing. It's going to be noticeable during that time period. Um, and it just smells unique and interesting. You're not going to remind other people of other people when you wear Hanoki. So that's why I really, really, really dig this fragrance. It comes in a 1.7 ounce. The scent is $120 for a 50 
Mexico, uh, which I have to say is extremely well priced, especially when you consider that it is on the lighter side and you would need to reapply. But for the scent itself, it's a bargain. $120 for this particular scent is a bargain. I would spend $200 for this particular bottle, at least. If they went, if they rose the price of this fragrance to $200 from $120, I wouldn't hesitate to buy another bottle if I ran out of this one. That's how nice this fragrance smells. That's how good this fragrance smells. That's how interesting this fragrance smells. Um, it just reminds me of the most calm experience. It just reminds me of just a really beautiful, calm experience that I absolutely love. So I have to tell you, I love Hinoki and it is insane. And when I found out that a lot of people say it reminds them of Aesop's Whill, I went and bought Whill. Now, Whill and, and Hinoki, they are very, very, very similar fragrances. What would be the difference? So if I were to compare the difference between Whill and Hinoki, remember as I mentioned, Hinoki reminds me of climbing to the top of a cypress tree in a forest after it rained and taking a deep breath. Quill reminds me of laying on the feet, laying at the feet of a cypress tree on the wet ground. So imagine, this is in the air, this is on the floor. Why do I say that? This fragrance is darker, it's deeper, not deeper in the sense where it makes you feel like it's louder, stronger, or anything like that. It's just a thicker scent, but not by much. It smells like um, more earthy, more soil. So when I smell this, it reminds me of taking a nap on a forest floor. And this reminds me of taking a deep breath on the top of a, of a for, of, on, on the above the forest, basically. So this is above the for, floor, this is above the forest. This is on the floor of the forest or the ground. And they're both absolutely beautiful. One of the things I also find about Whill, Whill is a little bit more leathery, you know? It's a darker, deeper scent. Fresh as Hinoki. And of course I would drop the bottle. <laughs> it's like it happens all the time. Never fails. Um, <laughs> but it didn't break, so that's all that matters. Um, but yeah, um, so like I was saying, let me put these down. Because <laughs> I always drop bottles. Um, so yeah, Quill is kind of like deeper, darker, more leathery. Um, Hanoki is fresher, cleaner, a little bit more breathier, you know, a lot more breathier. Um, I would say Hanoki would make a great fragrance for the day. Quill would make a great fragrance for the evening. Spring day, spring evening. Do they smell alike? Yes, they absolutely do. Hinoki, I mean, Hinoki smells like Whill, but without leather or suede. Um, let me just tell you what's in Whill. So Whill is a lot more resinous. Whill has elemi, pink pepper, thyme, which also is in Hinoki, um, along with cypress, another ingredient along with Hinoki, geranium, suede, vetiver, frankincense, and cedar. So Quill and Hinoki share these ingredients, frankincense, vetiver, uh, cypress, thyme, and those are pretty much a lot of the ingredients, that, pretty much what you'll smell in both fragrances. Um, so again, night, spring, day, spring, fresher, brighter, airier, darker, denser, deeper. They kind of last on skin around a similar time. I think Quill gets about an hour longer than uh, Hinoki. And Quill is $145 for the 50 mil. So uh, $25 more. And Quill was also created in 2017. So Quill is obviously, obviously inspired by Hinoki. It's not even a question. Home de Garcon does a lot of really interesting things with incense and um, green ingredients. And I definitely think Aesop was like, hmm, let's put a freight, let's do that too. <laughs> so they do smell very, very similar, but I kind of prefer Hinoki. Um, the reason why I prefer Hinoki is because of the freshness of this scent. Um, I just find that this fragrance 
just is so interesting and I don't care if anyone can smell this scent on me. I don't care if it's a room filler, if I get a compliment wearing it. I don't give a crap. I know when I wear this fragrance, I smell amazing. I don't need anyone to tell me that. I don't need anyone to say, wow, you smell great. I wear this fragrance with confidence because I know I'm smelling amazing. And I know I smell better than the majority of the people who want to wear this um, because it's amazing and I know it. And I just trust my taste and I have confidence that this scent is insane because I just love it and it is insane. Um, I do love Quill, but in a different way. I love Hill, Quill because to me, Quill just has a lot more of a darker experience than Hanoki, but I just find myself grabbing Hanoki a lot more often because it's like peace in a bottle. It's just calm, relaxing, beautiful green scent. Um, which green fragrances do you guys find amazing? Like, are you all like in that spring mode? Are you guys considering fragrances for the spring? And if so, what green fragrances are you all wearing? I am absolutely curious. I'd love to know. Um, I've been getting into a lot of green fragrances and these two I've been wearing as soon as March started. And it's not even that warm, but I gotta say, I just really dig Quill and Hanoki. Um, Hanoki and Will also are reminiscent of another fragrance by Comme des Garçons called Kyoto, which is from their incense collection. Beautiful fragrances. Another thing I noticed about Will, just thinking off the top, Will has a lot more frankincense that you'll immediately notice when you spray it. Like when you spray Will, there is a, it's a smokier experience. It's a leatherier or more suede experience. So just think suede and incense. This one is a little bit more... Huh. This one is a little bit more Middle Eastern, and this one is more Far Eastern. So, absolutely beautiful, um, amazing experiences. But again, I definitely have to give it to uh, Hanoki because also because Hanoki was the first. And uh, yeah, I just find it amazing. Um, oh my goodness. So guys, um, my mic is really, really bugging out on me today. <laughs> oh boy, it's been one of those days, guys. Uh, let's try this again. Um, let's see. Hey, Cheryl, what's up, Cheryl? How you doing? <laughs> um, Mitch, what's going on, Mitch? Oh yeah, I already said that. <laughs> Grayson, what's going on? Hey, Samaad, how are you? I hope you're well, my guy. It's good to hear all of your... Um, good to hear you all back. Velt Empire is really good, but it smells extremely close to Bugari Wood Essence. Hmm. Interesting. I'm glad you're feeling great, Samaad. Um, yeah, that's fascinating, though. Velt and Pierre. Who does Velt and Pierre? Is that, is that um, Misancier who does that? Who does Velt Empire? <laughs> Um, yeah, Vert and Pierre is a, I could have sworn that was mise en -cire. Okay, got it. Yeah. You know, the only thing I find about mise en -cire fragrances is that they do not last on me. There's only a couple of fragrances from mise en -cire that I found lasted on my skin, and that was the Ouds. Um, also, I found Blue Gin to last also. Vert and Pierre, I'm, I liked it, but I didn't like it. It just reminded me of a lot of fragrances that Alberto Marias does. And that's the thing when you when you um, when you're a guy like Alberto and you create so many perfumes, a lot of your fragrances start to smell the same. A lot of your fragrances start to step on each other's toes, in my opinion. And the thing I the thing I like about mise en cire are the options. And the things and the thing I don't like about mise en cire is the options. They just have way too much to consider, in my opinion, and it can be very, very, very confusing um, to buy from them. Um, but I really do dig the brand. Um, the thing I also find about Mise en Cire is like, I think sometimes to myself, like, why would I spend the money that they're asking for to smell like a designer fragrance? I mean, $300 for a fragrance that smells like you could have bought it at Blue Mercury or Ulta or Sephora. I think that's a little bit much. 
um and it's not like it's like tom ford or margella like brands that are that have reputation that are like a prestige brand that that has been there done that and done amazing you know um all the years of the business I find these on Sia fragrances to just smell very, like a lot of them to be extremely designer adjacent for a niche brand. But if you want to smell like, so Mise on Sia is a brand that'll have you smelling nice. Nice. You're not going to smell interesting wearing that brand, but you'll smell amazingly attractive to a lot of people. So if you're somebody who really cares about what other people think when you're wearing a fragrance, Mise on Sia would be a great consideration because a lot of their fragrances are made to smell appealing to most people. However, when I'm spending money, like they're charging for perfume, I don't want to smell easy to like. I don't want to smell nice again. You know, I just want to smell, I want to smell interesting. I want to smell memorable, but not nice. So um, for me, it's not my style, but I get, I got to tell you, if you're a fan of just smelling your best and having people who think you smell amazing and complimenting you, miso Sir is not a bad option. Um, Value-wise, I don't know if it's the best option, but it is a great fragrance brand. Um, and Roberto Marias is absolutely a genius. Um, and it's not even a question at this point. Um, so I was also curious to give you guys a, a peek into a new fragrance that just launched. And it's a fragrance by the brand Clive Christian. Um, <laughs> oh, no. I guess so. Is Morias great or very good? Mm, okay. I think Morias is great. The reason why I think Morias is great is because of the work that he's done. He's designed some of the best, most iconic fragrances in the, in the designer world. Um, he's designed CK1. Aqua de Jo, which those two fragrances on their own launched an entire... Yeah. I've been having a very, very crappy day with it, with connection in this store today. And so forgive me if my connection is off. Um, <laughs> it has just been an amazing, amazing day for me. Um, okay. So, yeah, and and so yeah, I wanted to also share with you all. My mic was acting up, so fixed it. <sighs> Hopefully, in my sound and my <laughs> my connection figures itself out. Um, forgive me, guys. But anyway, um, I wanted to share with you a fragrance that just released just just released and it is next level it's by the brand clive christian <laughs> and guys this fragrance is called town and country town and country by clive christian part of the crown collection i absolutely love this bottle this bottle is sick so beautiful um, I found out that Winston Churchill wore this fragrance. Winston Churchill, um, the Prime Minister of England during World War II, wore this fragrance. And I guess Clive Christian re-released it. And, um, it is absolutely beautiful. Hearing a lot of noise, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, I'm in a shared space, so. But anyway, um, Town & Country by Clive Christian just released this year, just came back out. It is a fragrance that was worn like 60, 70 years ago by a very famous leader. And when I smell this fragrance, I have to tell you, I absolutely think it's next level beautiful. I wore it on my hand. It's been on me for like the last two hours and I still notice it. It is not a weak fragrance whatsoever great sign. Hold on real quick. God. So, so yeah, 
So uh, this Clap Christian fragrance is absolutely lovely. Um, it's called Town and Country, and I do have notes to share with you what is in it. So this fragrance has bergamot, clary sage, juniper, lemon, cardamom, frankincense, sandalwood, white tea, ambergris, cashmere, cedarwood, and patchouli. And I have to say, when I first smell this fragrance, the first thing I'm gonna, I, the first thing I notice is the bergamot and the lemon. The bergamot and the lemon just stay on your skin for a really, really long time, especially for top notes, which is really crazy interesting to me. And as soon as I smell it, I also notice the clary sage. The clary sage just pops really, really, really quickly off my skin. I'm not going to lie to you guys. When I found out that this fragrance was worn by uh, Winston Churchill, I was a little nervous. I was like, yeah, okay, this is going to be one of those Fougere Royales, one of those, you know, bygone era type of fragrances that smell, smell old school. Imitsu, can you type your email? I DM'd you on Instagram. I would love to. I would love to tour the store. Perfect. I would love to offer you that tour. Um, I did not finish my Moria thought. Sorry about that. But just to answer your question, my email is el hyphen el hyphen a t o n at themaker.com. So. That is E L hyphen A T O N at the maker dot com. So E L hyphen A T O N at the maker dot com. I know my handwriting is a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> but that is my email address, okay? E-L hyphen A-T-O-N at themaker.com. You can email me for samples. I would be honored to offer you some. Um, I know there's a couple of you left that I have to offer samples to. They're on their way. Do not give up on me. I'm so sorry. It's taken me forever to do it. It's just a lot of logistical issues, and I like to send you guys a few things to consider and to try. So please forgive me. But do know that you are getting a sample pack worth a ton of money and you're getting it for free. So just know that. So please be patient with me. I promise you it'll be worth the wait. Um, but yeah, my thoughts on Alberto Morias. The man is prolific. Yes, because you're prolific, there are issues that come with being prolific, like redundancies and things like that. But Alberto Morias is prolific and he's prolific because of a good reason. A lot of companies want him to make their fragrances because they know he makes fragrances that are very, very easy to like and very easy to wear. And um, so he and um, I would say another fragrance perfumer named, uh, darn it. Quinton Beach. Quinton Beach my opinion is like the next Alberto Marias. He is literally going in that footstep where like everybody wants him to do their fragrances. All the buyers and all the department stores want his fragrances in their store to sell. So yeah, but Alberto, when you make that many bottles, you will start to do redundant things and things that kind of remind you of other things. And in that respect, a lot of people feel like it's like womp womp, but he's a good He's not a good, he's not a good perfumer. He's a great perfumer. He's a legend. He's an absolute legend. And as I mentioned, how many perfumers can say that they single-handedly, single-handedly changed the entire fragrance industry like Alberto can. Alberto can say that, you know. He even did Jeremy Fragrance's Office One, which for an independent fragrance by a YouTuber was extremely successful. Would that fragrance been even more successful had like the price been a little bit more reasonable and the person backing the fragrance was a little bit more stable, <laughs> to say the least? Absolutely. That fragrance is absolutely a trail. It, it, it made a huge impact, especially for a person that did not have a legit brand that you could buy in department stores and things like that. So when you think about it, Alberto Modias is responsible some, for some amazing, amazing ideas and concepts. And um, I'm impressed by Alberto Modias. I, I cannot deny the man is just insane. But is there fragrances that I've smelled from him? I'm like, mm, I'm not into it. 
with Alberto, in my opinion, it's hit or miss. Some frequencies are like, what the hell is he thinking? Like, there's a fragrance called Anticonformist by Mise en Cire that just, come, just came out. It's like the newest fragrance from Mise en Cire. When you smell Anticonformist, you'll say to yourself, like, why would it be named Anticonformist? It literally smells like every fragrance made in one bottle. Like, that's what Anticonformist smells like. So if you guys ever smelled Anticonformist by Mise en Cire, you're going to say, what the, is this like a troll? Like, is this name, naming it Anticonformist? Was this like a joke? Was this parody? You know, because you're going to smell it and be like, this is generic almost. So to call it Anticonformist is kind of like, like a very troll move in my opinion <laughs> um either they were trolling or the people running that brand are really really bad at certain things i'll just put it that way <laughs> um love quinton beach quinton is insane quinton Beach is a next level perfumer especially right now he's one of the best new well one of the best young perfumers in the fragrance world um without a question and yes, uh, some highs and some lows when it comes to Mr. Alberto. Um, I prefer to I prefer to go there just a tribute to Carl. Ah, ah, really? That's interesting. That's really sweet. Um, have you tried the new originals by Dossier? They are not typical scent profiles. I am not into Dossier. Um, I don't like the fact that they clone fragrance brands. I don't like the fact that they make fragrances that are literally trying to copy fragrances that are out. I just think that's stupid. Um, I don't like I don't like clones in that was I don't like clones. I'm I've gotten to the place where I don't want to wear a fragrance that smells like another fragrance. I don't want to wear fragrances that people love. I don't want to wear fragrances that I don't want to wear fragrances that people find popular. I don't want to wear fragrances that are popular. So why would I want to wear a clone, which is typically a copy of a popular fragrance? To be honest with you, I find like if a brand is copying a fragrance, that fragrance is too popular for me. That's that's kind of like what I think at this point. So when I see fragrance brands doing copies, when I see fragrance brands that are literally made to clone other fragrances, I just would never give them my money at this point. I might have like a few years ago when I was starting my journey, when I was getting into things and I couldn't afford certain fragrances that I wanted, I probably would do that. Um, but I also have to tell you, I'm at a place right now that if I had to do it all over again and start my journey over, I wouldn't do it then. I wouldn't do things the same. I would not go back and buy clones and buy fragrances that smell like other fragrances because I like that new mindset that I have. I like that mindset that I have now. I don't want anything that's popular. I don't, I don't, I don't, if you gave it to me, like if I had a fragrance that's popular, I'm going I'm to wear it. I'm going to love it. If you gave me a gift and it was a fragrance that was popular, I'm going to love it. I'm going to wear it. But those are not fragrances that I'm searching for anymore. So if a brand is a dupe brand and they're typically going to make dupes of what's popular and what everyone knows and loves, I don't want that dupe. Because I don't even want what it's duped of. I don't even want the original. <laughs> so I don't want the I don't want the dupe or the original. So yeah, I kind of don't want dossier. I don't I don't find anything they do interesting. I don't find anything they do. Um, I'm not curious about it. I really don't care. And there are certain brands that I notice, even brands that are like respectable and loved and liked. I just like Byredo. I think I mentioned this again before. Like I just don't want to wear anything from that brand because they're just like too popular to too many people. Um, and yeah, I do wear fragrances. I'm not going to act like, oh, I don't wear fragrances from brands that people like. I, I wear fragrances from very popular brands. But at this stage in my journey, that's not what I look for. But would I be smelling them to give you guys a heads up on stuff? Absolutely. But those are options that I'm looking for. So yeah, Dossier can get the boot. Not into it. Not into it at all. Um, Dua. Sorry, guys, you guys get the boot, you know? <laughs> I'm not into uh, any of that. Alexandria, Dua, although I do have still some of my Dua still, and, you know, I I've, I use them now mostly as, um, as, like, you know, closet freshness. I use them to make my closet smell amazing. I use it to make my drawers smell amazing. I don't use them on my skin. Absolutely not. And that's the other thing about clones that you have to be really, really conscious of. Not every clone is made with ethics. 
Not every clone is made with ethics. There are a ton of clones with ingredients that will make your skin break out, itch, that will affect you, that will affect your chemistry in one way or another. And so I am very, very, very wary of clone brands in general because if you're a clone brand, typically you're making fragrances with ingredients that are subpar in terms of quality. And a lot of those subpar ingredients are not the best to put on your skin. Would I wear them on clothing or would I spray my sheets or stuff like that? Yes. But would I put it on my bare skin? No. So Dossier would not go on my skin whatsoever because they are a clone brand. I just don't trust what's in it. I really don't. Um, and that's one of the things I love about niche. And that's why I've fallen for niche because one of the things I love about niche fragrances is you never really have to question what's in your bottles. You just know it's done well. It's it's on point, you know. Um, and actually, I shouldn't say that because not every niche brand is built the same. Some niche brands, they just definitely try to get over on Unsus unsuspected people in their journey and that's unfortunate uh, i'm not gonna say any names just yet but yeah there are definitely brands out there who are not worth the price they're charging in my opinion and i don't buy from those brands so uh but yeah so but yeah going back to that set that i wanted to share with you because i went into my little rant because you know i always go for a rant you guys know how to trigger me when you ask questions <laughs> um Give that the womp womp. Uh, have you ever tried new originals by Dossier? Ask that answered. Refined taste, fair enough. Um, I completely agree. I don't want to smell like everybody else. No, especially when you spend a certain amount of money. If I'm spending a couple of hundred or more on perfume, I don't want that perfume to be like in every room I walk into. I don't want to, like, honestly, guys, when people wear my fragrance and I walk, let's say, when I go to an event or when I go somewhere and people are wearing my fragrance, I want to go home and change. Or I want to have another fragrance in my pocket so I can spray something else on, mix it up so it don't smell like what everyone smells like in the room. I don't want to smell like other people. I don't. I don't care if I smell nice. I don't want to smell like other people. Um, I want when you smell me, you think of me only. You know, and that's not always the easiest to do. And that's one of the reasons why I'm attracted to fragrances that are on the more unique side. I'm a fan of weird. I'm a fan of strange. To me, strange and weird are attractive, you know, basic and generic and been there, done that. That's not sexy to me, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just a fan of being more unique and being more interesting and not smell like everybody else. And that's what everyone smells like, everybody else. So that's one of the reasons why I don't like clones. Going back to clones, <laughs> because when you wear a clone, you're wearing popular scents. And think about it, your clone can't be as good as the original. It just can't be. And if it was, it, wouldn't be, it would be very difficult to charge what they charge, the discount that they charge. So... Typically, if I'm going to go with a clone, I prefer to go with the original because the original typically is always better than the clone. I've rarely smelled a clone that smelled better than what it was cloned of from, yeah, rarely. I don't think, I can't recall a clone that smelled better than the original. I, I just can't. I just can't. Mm -mm. Can't. Um, so, yeah, that's why I don't like clones. But anyway, guys, um, I just wanted to share with you this new fragrance from Clive Christian. It's called Town and Country. It was a fragrance that just launched. So 2023, this fragrance just launched. It's from the Crown Collection. Love this bottle. Look at this sickness. Look at this sickness. This is ridiculous. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge fan. Guys, I've been getting into Clive Christian and guess what my favorite number guess what my favorite Clive Christian is? I swear I did not mean it to be, but you guys go, you're gonna be able to guess it. I mean, who what's my name? What's my initial? <laughs> um Clive Christian E. Oh my god. I feel like that's where um Sweetie Sweetie Aoud reminds me a little bit of um, e, um, by, oh, Sweetie Aoud from Roja reminds me a little bit of E. Black Phantom from Killian reminds me of E. But I love E more than both of the others because E just is so big and loud and obnoxious in a very, very awesome way. And I love, love, love Clive Christian E. It's the gourmand.
accent. It's very, very spicy and very, very dark. It's like a dark coffee loud bomb. <laughs> but I love it so much. Um, but Cloud Christian is a brand that I've been really, really getting into a lot more over the last couple of years. Like I love Rock Rose. Um, I love E. I love L. I love I. Um, C is too leathery. Well, C reminds me of other leathers that I've smelled, so I'm not really as much into that. But um, L, I, E, Rock Rose, uh, Town and Country, Hedonistic, unbelievable fragrances. Hedonistic is probably one of my favorite fragrances um, in that style of set. So if you love what I like, you have to try Hedonistic because it is the next level. Town and Country, though, is a very beautiful, very unique fragrance. And I think this scent is going to do extremely, extremely well for Clive Christian. Um, and again, as I mentioned, the notes in this fragrance, bergamot, clary sage, juniper, lemon, cardamom, frankincense, sandalwood, white tea, ambergris, cashmere, cashmere wood, uh, cedarwood, and patchouli. And I got to say, when I smell it, the notes that really pop out, cardamom, bergamot, clary sage, the lemon zest really, really comes out. Frankincense and tea. Definitely notice the tea ingredient in this fragrance and this frankincense. Ambergris, cashmere wood. I definitely smell cashmerean. It's in the base. It gives it... When I smell cashmerean, I think of fuzziness. I don't know why. It just has like a fuzzy vanilla quality about it and that's what I definitely get from this scent and there's no vanilla in this scent but you definitely get a creaminess and it's coming from the sandalwood it's coming from um the sandalwood and I think also the cashmere wood cashmere wood definitely kind of gives off a vanilla style or a quality about it it doesn't smell like a fragrance a Winston Churchill would have worn. I have to tell you. I don't know what his style is. I don't know what... I, I don't know Winston. You know, Winston ain't my friend. Solano, you're, you're my friend. But I don't know Winston Churchill, you know. Winston Churchill, never knew the guy. Um, but I have to tell you, I'm shocked that he would like this. I'm shocked that he would want to smell like this. Because this doesn't smell like... Well, it does smell expensive. And it smells like... A, uh, a luxury experience. It doesn't smell like anything you can find in a Macy's, a Sephora. This is not a fragrance you're going to find like in a basic place or in a basic store, you know. Um, town and country doesn't smell basic. <laughs> and I really, really am glad about that because I got to tell you, I'm, sometimes I'm a little nervous when, when niche brands get, um, when niche brands get purchased it, it makes me a little worried because usually a lot of things they do come across a little basic. And um, this is not. Town and Country smells amazing. And guess what? I got to tell you also, the, the salespeople at Club Christian are extremely happy with it. You know, when you have a sales team that loves a new release, you got a good release on your hands. And I have a feeling this fragrance is going to do very, very well in this summer and this spring. It definitely has a green style to it. I don't know. This is definitely something I could wear in a summer day, but I'd probably wear this in the evening only because of those deep, um, smoky, woody notes in the base. It's a, there's definitely like, I love this fragrance also because it's doing what a vanilla fragrance typically does, but without, without vanilla. I don't know. I find that fascinating. I really find that fascinating. I don't know. I wonder if this fragrance will last long. I'm going to test it. I'll let you know in the next stream how long this lasts on me. But, yeah. I kind of say, I, I have to say, I, I'm a huge fan of the Clive Christian brand. And I'm really, really a fan of this fragrance, Town & Country. Um, always get the ears, guys. Always get the ears. Mm, 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 mm. Now, when I really spray it, like I just did, it's like a warm, creamy citrus that I'm greeted with. Very beautiful. 
I don't get that perfume chemical that I find in fragrances that I encounter from designer brands, which I'm happy about. Um, I don't get that perfume chemical at all, which I love. Um, it doesn't really smell chemical whatsoever. It's really, really beautiful. Um, it's a mix between warm and fresh all at the same time. Wow. I also think it's definitely leaning more on the masculine side. I do think women can wear it, uh, which is, I think, the addition of that more cashmerian wood scent. It makes it a little bit more creamy and warm. Ugh, but oof. Guys, when I tell you this fragrance, it's just really attractive. I would like you to get a chance to smell this fragrance when you can, you know? Um, I will be offering samples of this fragrance to a couple of people. Email me. The first few people who email me about it, I'll send you a sample of it. Um, I think you'll find this fragrance amazing. If you're interested in Clive Christian's Town & Country and it's hard to find where you are, you can always hit me up also on my email address and I'll let you know about this. You can also purchase it from me if you want, if you want. It's not my goal again, guys, to come back on this channel and sell to you all. Um, I don't care if you buy this from me or buy it from somewhere else. Um, but of course, if you do want to purchase it, I will be able to help. Um, but again, I, I, don't, I don't want anyone to think that I'm doing YouTube videos again so that I can make money off of my audience. I don't care to make money off my audience at all. I make good money, guys. I have two careers. You have no idea. I am doing very well. I do not care about making money off of my audience. You're not going to see me doing sponsored content. You're not going to see me doing any videos where I'm making money from brands, anything like that. I don't care to make money off of talking to my audience about YouTube, um, about fragrances on YouTube. That's just not what I'm into. Um, and um, yeah, that's not my goal. I read somewhere a guy asked me, you know, I, I, I miss your videos where you weren't really trying to sell a product. I was never selling then, and I am not selling today. I am literally just sharing with you all things that I love, things that I'm passionate about, things that I think you need to consider. And if you consider it, great. If you want to purchase it from me, yay. If you don't, yay. Just come through. See my videos. You know, check it out. Um, ask questions. Be a part of the conversation. Be engaging. And I'll engage with you. I really, really don't care to make money off my own at all at all at all although i'm not gonna lie to you guys i really hope you do get my book when it does launch when i do get my book published i would definitely want you all to purchase my book but my book is only what my book is only going to be below 30 dollars. so at the end of the day that is literally you know that's like you know a lunch you know that's not that much money so hopefully you guys would want to support that book when it does publish but i am not trying to make money off of perfumes off my audience at all um at all i'm not a seller i don't even sell when i'm selling i really don't my my style of selling is just to share my passion and just offer like honest opinions you know i'm not a salesperson you know far below, far beyond a salesperson um and i don't want to make money off my audience like others not at all um I want to assist you all. I want to make it where you all get the best information possible and offer you information you don't always find on YouTube about perfume. So, yeah, that's my focus. But I will be able to sell this bottle if you want it. <laughs> um, and I will be able to share with you samples if you want this fragrance and you want to try it and you can't find this bottle in your neck of the woods. Please just let me know. Um, <laughs> respect thank you thank you thank you thank you i need some <laughs> street fighter sippers so did you outgrow these well when you're talking when, when you're doing live you can't really be like hi you can't you know you can't really you know there's nowhere to put a although when i do my lives what i'm what i'm gonna do see right now i'm working on my phone but in the future, I'm going to work on making it a lot more tight. So in my lives going forward, I'm going to be. So I already got a really cool mic set up in my lives going forward. And the lighting is pretty nice. In my next lives, I'm definitely going to, I'm, I'm working on getting a new laptop, um, webcam, all that sort of thing. So this way I can um, <laughs> be a little bit more interested, engaging in these live streams. And then that way I'd be able to, 
show you what you're asking me for, which is giving you some sound effects. Uh, just emailed you. I got that, Ruth. I just saw it. So thank you so much. I confirmed I received it. Uh, yes, you did get it right. Thank you so much, Ruth. And um, I'm so grateful for you watching. Thank you so much. Um, let me know what kind of fragrances you like as well. Like, what fragrances you're into? What fragrance style do you find yourself most attracted to? Email me again and let me know what that is because I will also share with you some samples that might hopefully fit your taste. Um, so, yeah, guys. Uh, I wanted just to share with you my feelings and thoughts about these amazing fragrances. Loki and Quill by Aesop by Comme de Garçon. Comme de Garçon's Hanoki is my favorite of the two, but Quill is the most, I would say, intense of the two, not by much. An extra hour or so longevity from this one. This is more of like your leather night out take on Hanoki, which is more perfect for your day use. Perfect fragrances for the spring, night, day serious beautiful fragrances they literally smell like each other except this one is a little bit denser this one is a little bit fresher they both are beautiful absolutely beautiful although i do find hanoki a little to be a little bit better personally speaking um but you cannot go wrong with either and uh hanoki is just a little bit less expensive by a couple of dollars so Get these two fragrances. Get your nose on these two fragrances. I don't want to encourage anyone to spend money on perfume. That's not my goal. My goal is to get you guys to try new things and to see if they work for you. Um, get these two in your nose ASAP. They are awesome. Um, and, of course, <sighs> Town & Country, Cloud Christian. Uh, this is a fragrance that I think I'm going to be <laughs> buying for myself. You'll get a book. Thank you, Dustin. I appreciate you for that. You know, it's 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 not going to break your pockets. Not like a book is going to cost as much as a Navi Tooth fragrance or a what's that other fragrance brand that what's Ashton's brand? <laughs> that brand and the other brands and all the brands and all the companies that are doing business with YouTubers. Um, guys, get your nose on this when you can. It is seriously good, and. I think it's going to do really, really well in the summer. I got to also say, I find it's a little bit on the lighter side compared to what I was expecting. It's not filling the room, but I'm curious to see how long this scent lasts on my hand. It's been on me for about two hours now, and at two hour mark, it's kind of calm and not loud and strong. But I'm curious to see how long this calm, subtle experience lasts for. Because if it leaves my skin in another hour or two, I'm going to be a little bit annoyed. Especially because this scent is so expensive, you know? I'm going to spend $120 on a scent that lasts about four hours, three to four hours. That's not a problem for me. This scent, it smells so good, it's worth it. But when you're talking about four and change, mm, but I have to say, it smells so good in terms of, like, it's attractive and it's unique and it's interesting. And that's why I think it's got my head because it doesn't remind me of other perfumes for fresh fragrance, and that's why I like it, and I like unique, fresh scents. Um, so I might end up getting a bottle of this. <laughs> um, and if it gets to the five-hour mark, yay, you know? But if it does about four hours, it's not a big deal. At the end of the day, it's all about the scent, not about the money, in my opinion. It's all about the scent. I've been following the Latafa craze they are going hard right now. Uh, Latafa. Latafa has always been on point. And to be honest with you, they are... This is the interesting thing. Latafa is kind of more highly regarded than Arabian Oud, which I was shocked by. Because when you come... In, a, in this country, Arabian Oud is so... Arabian Oud, you know, they, they're so ostentatious and extra. But Latafa is very basic, very simple brand and um not basic they're very they're not like all over the place with their packaging and you know um very very they're not as crazy as i would say arabian oud is but latafa does some really interesting perfumes um i've worn a few latafas that i thought was really well done and um of course ragba is a classic and a lot of brands stole ragba um which is one of latafa's most famous perfumes so yeah, Latafa's on point. The fact that you're on their, you know, on their thing right now, it's, it's, you have great taste. 
I'm going to check out Arabian Oud. Good luck. There's a lot of really interesting stuff there. Uh, Arabian Oud is... Arabian Oud makes some really good scents. I do find that a lot of their fragrances smell the same. And they do this really weird, interesting thing where they... Everything smells like there's Oud in it, but not everything smells like Oud. Does that make sense to you guys? Everything that I feel like Arabian Oud makes smells like there's Oud in it. But there's no Oud in a lot of their fragrances, even though the price point indicates that there is Oud in a lot of their fragrances. So that's something I'm not a fan of. Um, honestly, I feel like you're spending like about another $100 on a box, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Arabian Oud is not a horrible brand, not a bad brand. They make a few fragrances that I like. For instance, I love Rosala and I love Madawi. Ugh, Madawi. I've been talking about Madawi for years. It was on top 10 list of mine from way back, um, my my winter top 10 list, that fragrance would feature on it a lot. And it was in the top three. I think it was number one a couple of years. I love Madawi by Arabian Oud. I think that's one of the best fragrances that they've made by a long shot. Um, also Rasala, which is a really interesting chocolate Oud combo. Um, although I do like the Strange Love Chocolate Oud better, but I'm not having to spend $800 for a 100 mil. Rasala is at least like 200. Do I think Rasala is worth the price? I don't know. I just don't know. I would probably get that fragrance on sale because I don't know if there's real Oud in that scent at all. Uh, so yeah, but Arabian Oud is not bad, but I do think Latafa is on point. I'm curious to know the Latafa fragrances that you find are awesome. Please comment in the comment section and let us know what Latafas we should be considering and looking out for. Ragba has always been a fragrance that I love. Um, they also have one that's like um, Ragba Wood Intense was pretty crazy. I used to like really wear that until it got so suffocating to me that I ended up just spraying it in my closet and using it as a, as a room spray. Um, and even as a room spray, that fragrance would make you choke. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, Ragbo Wood Intense was uh, was a lot. Um, there's a bunch of there's a couple of oud fragrances from Latafa that I thought were really really interesting, and I do like their atars. Like they make really nice oils also. Um, yeah, so I definitely think you should check out Arabian Oud. It's on point. By the way, guys, please do me a favor. While you're here, while you're checking out this video, while you're checking out this live, do me a favor and hit the like button. Um, I know there's not too many of us in this, and that's okay. I only do this for those who really, really care about it at the end of the day. Um, even if I had like five people in these lives, it would be worth it to do because you five people are people that I care about, you know. So at the end of the day, thank you so much for joining. Um, if you can, hit that like button. Comment when this video uploads in the comment section. And um, let me know what you guys are wearing for the spring. I'm curious to know what your favorite Comme de Garçon fragrances are. I'm curious to know what your favorite um, Aesop fragrances are. I'm curious to know what your favorite Clive Christian fragrances are. I love Rock Rose. Ah, I love Rock Rose. But Hedonistic. What? Hedonistic. Every time I wear Hedonistic, I get complimented. Every single time. Women want to know what I'm wearing. Guys want to know what I'm wearing. It's just... And it's and it's an, it's a it's a thick kind of sweet fragrance, but it doesn't smell pretty, so it's perfectly suitable for my taste. You know, my standard. I always ask myself, does it smell pretty? Does it smell handsome? I don't want to smell pretty, so if I can say yes to that question, I typically avoid it. Do I ask? And then after everything, I ask myself, does it smell pretty or handsome? If I can't say yes to either, it's typically gender neutral, in which case I'll wear it also. Um, from Comme de Garçon would be Man 2 and Floriental. Oh my God. Floriental and Man 2, insane. I also love that, um, the Rouge one that they came out with recently. It's like an incense berry full fragrance. It's like incense and berries, I think. Um, but that's what it smells like. It's like a very red berry and incense -y scent. It's smoky. It's freaking awesome. Floriental, I always love because I'm a huge fan of plum, and plum is one of my favorite ingredients, and there's tons of plum in Floriental. But you guys have to try the Red Rouge bottle. The Rouge, um, I don't even remember what the name of the scent is. I think it's called Rouge. But get that, get your nose on that one. Get a sample of that one, because that pebble bottle is beautiful. Um, I also like the copper. Um, from Comme de Garçon. I love Comme de Garçon, period. 
there's just there's just very few things I don't like about Comme des Garçons. Comme des Garçons. Even fragrances that I would wear from Comme des Garçons, I find them attractive. Like they came out with a fragrance called Marseille or Marseille. I think it's Marseille. And um Marseille is it's like it's like basically a white musk fragrance. It just smells like soap. It is amazingly good. Um, one of the better soapy options if you're into clean soapy fragrances, Marseille is great. And it doesn't smell like old granny soap. And it doesn't smell like like Irish spring. It's it's really good. It's really, really, really good. Um, it's called Rouge. I will check it out. Thank you. I think, I, yeah, I knew it was something like that. <laughs> I just purchased the Or Tabacola. I love the fruits mixed with the tobacco and honey. So good. Tobacola is amazing. I smelled it, but I've never worn it. It's in the store, and I plan on, you know what? I'm going to wear Tobacola home. Thank you. Well, ooh, I can't because I just sprayed this on. <laughs> you know what? I'll wear Tobacola here. I'm going to just go home smelling like Bergdorf Goodman. Why not? Um, I went to try God of Fire by Stefan Hubert, Umbert Lucas and Fleur de Lay by Miu Miu. Ah, I also talk about perfume, so my tastes are very eclectic. Yeah, it's it's amazing when you have an eclectic taste. Eclectic taste is kind of awesome, but it's also a problem because when you like a lot, you spend a ton of money like I did in my, in my fragrance journey. So be careful. <laughs> When you're eclectic, you usually have no discipline. You usually have no chill. And that's where it can get a little dicey. Um, e, my man, have you ever tried the Roja ones that cost 1000 to 1500 bucks? Are they worth that? So, yes. So, there is um, a fragrance by Roja called Roja Signature, which is like, it's like called Roja by Roja Dove. And, or Roja. Forgot. It's Roja Dove. It's not Roja. I know people, it's Roja, it's supposed to be kind of like a play on how British people say Roger, because his name is Roger. So it's like Roja is Roja, Ro Roja, Roja, Roja Dove. Anyway, um, yes, I did smell a couple of their more expensive fragrances. Um, one is, as I mentioned, the Roja or the Roja fragrance, um, the Roja signature scent. I think that fragrance is like twenty-five or thirty-five hundred dollars. It has gold flakes in the bottle, just so they basically just to communicate what's in the bottle is so much more important than the flakes itself. The flakes are less valuable than the actual perfume itself. Um, a very 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 austere way of communicating luxury in my opinion but awesome at the same time and what does it smell like it smells it smells awesome it smells it smells like a timeless fragrance that was made like a decade or two ago it smells like a fragrance that just smells like any man making millions it just smells extremely expensive but it also has a style that reminds me of like classic perfumery so um, it is a very rich, beautiful fragrance. And by the way, guys, speaking of Roja, there's a new Roja fragrance called Isola Blue. You're not going to find information on it on Instagram. You're not going to find information on it, excuse me, on Fragrantico or Parfumo. It just came out. As a matter of fact, the only information I was able to find out about it was the trademark information because it just released. Roja is going to be coming, Roja is going to be coming to Bergdorf Goodman in April. And in April, we're also going to be launching that new Isola Blue fragrance. So I'm really, really excited about that. That fragrance smells absolutely beautiful. Um, it's a 50 ml fragrance, and you're not going to find it in a lot of places. I don't even know where it's being released, but I know it's going to be released at Bergdorf, and it smells beautiful. He also released a fragrance called, I think, Taif Aoud which is like an, a, a rose oud combo, but very, very fresh and breathy. It's a one. It's only available in a 100 ml. Do I think Roja fragrances are worth the price? Some people say no, but I have to tell you, I think they are. I really think they are. And why? It depends on the fragrance, of course. And it also depends on like your standard. You know, If you have a standard that their fragrances don't match, don't meet, it makes sense why you wouldn't like them. But in my opinion, I find that a lot of Rocha fragrances are done very, very well, even though they are 
inspired by other things. Like he created Vetiver for his partner, from what I understand, because his partner was a huge fan of the Vetiver from Guerlain. So Roja was inspired by the Guerlain from the Guerlain Vetiver to create his Vetiver, and I like his Vetiver a lot more. But I love the Guerlain price point for their Vetiver a lot more. Um, but I have to say, the vetiver from Roja is just a standard vetiver. It's a standard. It's a vetiver that you would compare all other vetivers to. And if it doesn't meet the, the, the standard of Roja, it's not a really great vetiver. So if it doesn't come close, it's, it's like a want want vetiver. So I have to tell you, I do find Roja's fragrances to be to be impressive, to be very impressive. I love Elysium. I love Sweetie Aoud. I love Diaglev, I love Roja uh, Signature, I love um, Creation E, I am a huge fan of, I, I like a lot of his fragrances, I like Scandal, um, I like the Musk Aouds, I like Isola Blue, um, I, I really mix Sweetie and another fragrance from them. I like to layer them. I like the Danger for Women. Danger for Women smells amazing on men. Um, so yeah, I, I did a lot of fragrances from Roja that I find really, really well done and absolutely beautiful. And so when I hear people like like try to crap on him, I just, I just kind of look at that with a side eye because it's like, I mean, it's hard to make new, it's hard to make fragrances that are absolutely unique and interesting. But I think Roja does a really good job of taking fragrance styles that are a little bit more classic and making them and re, and making them smell today and making them smell like something that doesn't remind you of like wearing your your grandfather's fragrance. They're very very interesting. And recently I've noticed that Roja's fragrances have been veering into a much more play I wouldn't say playful, but a lot of his fragrances are coming across a lot more modern i would say like a lot of the newer things that roja is doing doesn't i, I don't feel like roja is making fragrances just for himself anymore i feel like roja is making fragrances for his younger self you know sometimes as well so i like that i'm a huge fan of burlington 1819 oh my god burlington 1819 is probably one of the best freshies in fragrance in my opinion um it's one of my favorite summer fragrances period Burlington 1819 is a legend fragrance, in my opinion. Very few fragrances do what that fragrance does. Very few fragrances compare, in my opinion, when it comes to freshies with citrus and a bunch of other warmer ingredients that can be worn in hot weather. How do you hate Burlington 1819? It's just, it's a great fragrance. So yeah, I do find Roja to be awesome. Um, very, very nice one. I mean, come on. They do smell classic. They very much do smell classic. But I do find that a lot of the new fragrances that have been coming out from Roja, like he designed all those, um, all of his most famous fragrances he made in colognes, cologne parfum. Those are really more modern, more youthful. You know, the Elysium cologne parfum is a very playful fragrance compared to Elysium parfum. The Elysium parfum smells like business. The cologne version of that fragrance smells like a day at the beach. You know, it smells more more casual. So I do find a lot of their fragrances to to be kind of on that classy, classic refinement style. But more recently, I feel like Roja has been making fragrances that could be worn by a man at twenty five, not in his forties. You know, um, so yeah, um, I, I I think Roja's fragrances are awesome and. To be honest with you guys, I hate to look at fragrance in terms of age. You know, I really do. Older men need playful fragrances. Younger men need sophisticated fragrances. I hate looking at perfumes in terms of like age. I think that is so, so short-sighted and misleading. Because um, as I mentioned, like as we all get older, I mean, all, even an elder, even like a man in his 70s, even a seven, if even an, even a person in their seventies has a playful style, has a playful side. Everyone has a fun side. I hope, and I hope, and I would hope that when I become an elder, I would have a playful side too. And in those instances, I'm going to wear fragrances that are a little bit more fun and playful. You know, there's a time for everything. 
There's no reason to be serious all your life or to be playful all your life. So switch it up, just like you would switch up your style. You wear a suit sometimes. You wear jeans and a t-shirt other times. So wear the equivalent style of scent to match those looks, and you'll smell amazing. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> again, um, me and my rants. Nice grapefruit. Yep, it sure is. Um, I was wondering about your opinions on Creed Viking. Creed Viking reminds me of Chinese medicine. <laughs> but I think Creed Viking is one of Creed's best new fragrances. You know, I think it's better than Aventus Cologne, just from a composition standpoint. Because again, Creed Viking is a very interesting, unique scent. When Creed does things that are unique and interesting, people don't like it. When Creed does things that are basic and easy, People don't like it. So it goes to show you it's so hard to please people. <laughs> people don't like anything, you know. Um, but I do find a, a Creed's Viking, I don't like the name. I don't know if the name translates to what I'm smelling. Um, it doesn't remind me of, like, you know, explorers on the seas. I don't get that. Um, I don't get rugged masculinity either, you know. So I don't understand the Viking connotation. I really don't. But... I think the fragrance smells very, very interesting. And I think the fragrance smells unique. I just don't find it fits my style. So I'm not a fan of the scent from my state, from my taste, but I think Creed's Viking is a very impressive fragrance. Um, and it's a very impressive fragrance because it doesn't smell like other fragrances. And that to me is impressive in this day of fragrances smelling like everything else. So that's why I think it's on point to me personally. Um, but what do you think? What do you think? I'm, I would love to hear your thoughts on that fragrance. Please comment in the comment section and let me know what you think of Viking by Creed. Um, what do you think about Creed Viking Cologne? I thought Cologne was really nice, but I didn't understand why they made Cologne because I don't think Viking was like that top seller that would require a Cologne. Um, I would probably more do a Cologne of Millicene Imperial or a, a Cologne of, um, of, wow of Himalaya. I would reinvent Himalaya and make it a little bit more youthful, you know, because that fragrance, I think if you just change a few things around, that scent could be reintroduced and be a banger. But Himalaya just comes across very, very serious and very mature. But yeah, I like Creed. I don't like Creed's price point in this country, though. USA prices for Creed, it sucks. Um, but if I were going to, if I were going to Italy, if I were going to like London, if I were going to Paris, uh, I would load up on a couple of Creed fragrances cause they're so well priced there. Um, but yeah, every, in America, we're always gouged. We're gouged every which way, you know? Mm. <laughs> um, yes, it's medicinal, medicinal and mentholic. Yes, absolutely. It's definitely a medicinal scent. It, like I said, it reminds me of Chinese medicine. <laughs> when I smell Viking, I think Chinese medicine or like a tonic, you know? healthy and um, natural and uh, herbal and rooty and eucalyptus -y and all that, you know, that's very, but I got to also say like how many fragrances incorporate eucalyptus, like with a bold eucalyptus at that. So yeah, Creed Viking is a very, very interesting, very well done fragrance that um, it's not a likable fragrance, but it's an impressive fragrance, if I were to say. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, hmm. Gotta run. Yes, WSP, thank you so much for joining. Um, I really, really appreciate you all. Thank you so much for checking out this live. Um, it was absolutely a fun, pleasurable experience always to chat with you all and to, like, you know, talk to you all. I'm, I really, really enjoyed chatting with you all, hearing your thoughts and responding to it in real time. So thank you so much for joining. Please hit that like button on your way out. And it was a pleasure. Thank you so much, guys, for being on this live. E, what's your thoughts on Savage Elixir? It's unnecessary. It's so unnecessary. Um, skip it. Savage Elixir is, is it's, it's unworthy. It's unworthy. I'll just put it that way. If they came out with Savage Elixir first, it would be worth your time. If they came out with Savage Elixir second, it would be worth your time. The fact that they came out with that fragrance in its third iteration of Savage 
makes that fragrance a miss for me because it smells too much like a fragrance that smells like a douche fragrance. I'm sorry. I'm just so sorry. Like, I don't want to smell like that dude that finds Sauvage awesome. I'm past that stage. In my journey, I like the scent. I think it's awesome. But I'm not wearing that fragrance because it literally smells like every high school locker room in this country at the moment. So, not for me. Not for me at all. And yes, the Elixir smells more rich. And yes, the Elixir is the best of the three. But you smell like the original still. It's it's just not worth it for me, you know? And I and I hate the price point. Why would I spend what that fragrance costs when niche fragrances exist? It doesn't make sense. So no, skip the designer niche version of Sauvage and just go with a niche version of something better. That's my suggestion. Move on. S screw Sauvage. By the way, guys, we are the ones who teach these brands what to give us. The reason why we keep getting garbage is because we keep buying garbage. You want to change the perfume industry? Each one of us do one thing. Stop buying crap. Period. If we stop buying crap, we won't be getting crap. That's it. Take care, guys. You're my favorites. Peace.